It's no longer news that the chip world has been at a standstill. No thanks to the ongoing feud between giants, China and the United States of America. It's also no longer news that the latter has placed export bans on China, leaving them unable to access any of ASML's cutting-edge technology, especially UVs. But, just as America has been crippling China's strides in the chip game, what if we told you China had also similarly checkmated America's advances in the game for decades? Join us in today's video to get the tea surrounding America's charge with ASML as a key player, as well as China's game changer to one-up America. Taking over the charge of the Trump administration, the current American president, Joe Biden, decided to take things even further. Starving China's semiconductor chip industry in a bid to prevent the nation from creating advanced weapons and thus being a threat to national security, America has successfully gotten allies to join the cause. Recently, the Dutch government revealed they'd be working on America's export restrictions to nations that could threaten national security, and guess what, more laws have reportedly been put in place. If there's one firm that truly has the might to dampen China's impressive strides in the field of technological advancement, beyond any doubt, it has to be ASML. The firm's most advanced lithography equipment is UV, that factually can't be made anywhere else, and thanks to restrictions, they've never been sold to China. In place of UVs, though, ASML had always been allowed to supply China with the next best option, DUVs. But here's where things start to take a dramatic turn. Following the new export controls, do you know ASML is no longer permitted to freely export deep ultraviolet lithography machines to China anymore? To do so, the firm would have to obtain special licenses. This could mean two things. For one, it could mean DUV machines would be slower to arrive in China or possibly make its availability in China to fewer quantities. But who's to say it isn't an indication of an imminent total ban on the sale of DUVs to China? Regardless of what the outcome would truly mean, not all of America's chip allies are grabbing their pitchforks. Some of them are a little more subtle. Let's take Japan, for example, their approach is different. In light of the Netherlands' new trade policy, Japanese lawmakers seem to be taking their time to think. Yasutoshi Nishimura, the trade minister of Japan, had a press conference, and on it, he talked about Japan's stance regarding the first blood drawn by the Dutch. We will consider appropriate measures in light of developments in the Netherlands. Our understanding is that the Dutch announcement does not target a specific country. However, it shouldn't be a shock. Before Nishimura's statements, Japanese leaders had already signaled the nation would be taking a less aggressive approach in comparison to America and, more recently, the Netherlands. At this point, are you wondering how China is going to react to the recent developments? Ponder no more, it's safe to say it will be the same reaction we've seen repeatedly, never relent. And since the export controls were rolled out, China had always been quick to dust itself off and keep the march going. It's no surprise why they've still been showing steady signs of progress. Ma Jiwa, the founder of Beijing Daru Management Consulting Company, has openly boasted that China's chip industry has stabilized despite the initial struggles faced due to America's blockade. He notes, the development of China's chip industry has not been disrupted by US interference. Instead, it is developing at its own pace and has made quite good achievements. Additionally, Ma stated that China is already capable of making domestic substitutes for 28 nanometer chips while experiencing breakthroughs in 14 nanometer chips. Here's a fun fact. With total sales reaching in excess of $180 billion in 2022, did you know the Chinese mainland remains the world's largest single semiconductor market? If that doesn't tell you China is far from being battered down, what will? American billionaire Bill Gates has even openly stated America would fail in its quest to nip China's lofty ambitions in the bud. He even believes China would rapidly catch up to America, which further buttresses his hope of Beijing and Washington working cordially moving forward. If that still doesn't speak volumes, have you ever thought about the possibilities of other methods replacing UVs? It's already clear that the most cutting-edge lithography machine on the planet has reached its limits, right? That's where the promising photonic chips come in, and guess what? China is the frontrunner in that aspect. Not even America has been able to reach China's advancements in the field of photonic chips. But before we go into that, do you think America or Europe can ever gain full autonomy in the semiconductor industry in the foreseeable future? Be it photonic or electronic chips, it's incredibly difficult to think so. For those who aren't aware, photonic chips use light instead of electricity to either convey or process information. The key materials to produce photonic chips are silicon, gallium arsenide, indium phosphide, lithium niobate, and germanium. With that in mind, let's dissect the aforementioned materials. 
To start with, silicon can be mined in the USA and Europe. As a matter of fact, thanks to Norway, Spain, and Iceland, the continent remains the leading producer of it, but China does as well. Indium phosphide and gallium arsenide are typically synthesized from other materials. Lithium niobate is derived from niobium and lithium, but lithium is mined in China, Australia, and America. Finally, we have germanium, where most of the world's supply comes from China. It's all the more reason why China is beating America in the prospect of making an alternative that ideally beats ASML's lithography machines. But what about the usual electronic chips? The key raw materials are silicon, copper, gold, aluminum, and tungsten. With silicon already being addressed, let's talk about copper. Once again, China is one of the leading producers of it alongside America, Peru, and Chile. The next materials on the list are aluminum and gold, once again, China and several other nations across the globe produce them. Finally, we have tungsten. But guess what? China is part of its leading producers. In the world of technology, China remains one of the top dogs and admittedly heads and shoulders above everyone else, except one, America. With America's influence and powerful chip allies, they've been able to suppress China's endeavors. China may be doing amazing at the moment, but it goes without saying that they'd have been better off if the chip ban had not occurred. But here's the crazy part. Did you know China has a core technology that it has been able to block from the USA? For over 20 years, this core technology has had America eating dust. For those who may not be aware, we're referring to the fascinating nonlinear optical crystal, potassium beryllium fluoroborate. More commonly known as KBBF crystals, it is capable of shortening the wavelength of lasers. As a matter of fact, it's also capable of emitting ultraviolet light with a narrow bandwidth. KBBF crystals can be used in varying scientific research. Deep ultraviolet solid-state lasers can be developed through it, and such purposes are crucial to the current world of scientific research. Due to how China was the only one with the ability to manufacture these crystals, they restricted its export. For two decades, not only had the crystals been restricted in America, but also, they became scarce materials in the Western nations led by America. In light of that, the United States of America worked tirelessly to change the game. It took them a significant period to get there, but thanks to their perseverance and sheer will to keep up with China, they finally succeeded after 15 years of steady research spanning from 2009 to 2016. Yes, you heard that right. America successfully found a way to manufacture KBBF crystals and harness its capabilities to produce deep ultraviolet lasers. But their victory didn't last long for long. Soon, China left them eating dust, yet again. KBBF crystals may be pivotal to modern-day science, but they have one major flaw. Made with beryllium, these crystals were highly dangerous thanks to their toxicity. As if that wasn't enough, do you know KBBF crystals also have a layered growth habit? Thanks to that property, it's not the best option as long as production is concerned. In light of that, China searched for something better. The quest eventually led the nation to discover, or dare to say explore, better and newer laser crystal materials. Of course, we're referring to the Beryllium Free Deep Ultraviolet Nonlinear Optical Crystal Material, LSBO. Not only does this crystal ensure an effective phase matching frequency doubling output, but also, its optical transmission range is 186 nanometers. It is also moisture proof and has a moderate hardness making it easier for manufacturing and processing. Being a significant upgrade to KBBF crystals, LSBO crystals are the frontrunners to become the poster boy of deep ultraviolet nonlinear optics. Music to the ears of China. Do you believe China truly poses a threat to national security, as America claims? Also, are you in line with Bill Gates' thoughts that America would ultimately fail in its quest to hold China down and instead should be looking forward to working hand-in-hand -hand with China? Let us know in the comments.